Hello. So you've made a fantastic PowerPoint presentation and you're going to put it up on the internet for your students to share and use perhaps or just to send it up on the internet uh, by email or through a cloud storage to somebody else and that's brilliant. You've put a lot of effort into your PowerPoint presentation but there's one thing missing and that's you. After all, when you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, what you're normally doing is talking. In this presentation, sorry, in this video, I'm going to help you understand how you can package you, as in your voice, and all the timings and all your clicks in a PowerPoint presentation so that somebody can download that and hear and watch and listen to you presenting your PowerPoint presentation. Here's all about narration. So what is narration? Well, it's basically like turning your PowerPoint presentation into a video. You can set up the timings of how quickly you go from one slide to the other, from one point to another, and also you can package up you talking, your voice as you're speaking through the presentation, which basically makes it a lot more useful. If you make a good PowerPoint presentation, then you won't be putting paragraphs and paragraphs of writing. To be honest, um, this slide here has far too much text on. That's twice as much text as I would recommend, really. Um, but if you have, and that's certainly way too much text, but if you have uh, just a few bits of text on there, that looks great. That captures people's uh, attention and they aren't just sitting there reading while you're blathering away, distracting them. You've done a good presentation, not had too much text there, but you don't have your voice. So narration allows you to package up your voice with each slide in your presentation. Let's have a look, see how this actually works. Uh, first of all, I'm using Office 365, which is, of course, the latest version of Microsoft Office. If you have an older version of Office, um, then it's still included. It'll be in more or less the same place and work more or less the same way. So just look out for the um, menus, the words, the keywords um, and the options available as, as they will still be available for previous versions. What we need to do, though, uh, to set up the narration is head to the Slideshow tab at the top. Right underneath the Slideshow tab, we can see this Record Slideshow. And this will uh, basically play your slideshow. As soon as you click on that, you will play your slideshow and you can then present it as you would normally. Uh, you can talk through each of the points. When you're ready to move on to the next point, you can click and bring up the next point. When you want to go on to the next slide, again, you can do that. And all of that will be recorded. Think of it a little as though you're recording a video. You just happen to be using PowerPoint in the video. So let's see how this works. Then I'm going to click on this record slideshow button. It asks me specifically, what do I want to include? Now we've got here slide and animation timings. So even if you've uh, put up timings for your transitions and things like that, that's not to do with this. This basically says, uh, how long do you want each slide to be visible for? And it'll basically be visible for as long as you want until you click that button and you go, uh, move on to the next slide, um, then that'll all be recorded. Um, animation timings, if you've got a bullet list as you have here on this second slide, um, when you click once the first point will appear and then when you click again the second point will appear and so on and you can record that timing as well so if you've got a lot to say about the first bullet point and um, then that first first bullet point can be left visible for a longer period of time than the next one which you might have not much to say about at all 
narrations, uh, that's the voice, that's you speaking, and also ink and laser pointer. Uh, you might realize that you can record uh, pen and ink on a slide during a presentation. Again, I'll show you how that works. So if you don't want to include um, things like narration or ink and laser pointing, you just want to set up the timing, then untick this box. If you want to include your voice, but you don't want to include the slide and animation timings, untick that box. I'm going to keep both ticked and normally that's what you'll do. So let's hit start recording. So now we're playing the presentation and we are recording. You can see at the top left of the screen there, um, it's showing exactly how long I've been talking on this slide. By the way, if you decide that you really need the toilet or you need a cup of tea or you need to clear your throat or something, you can simply um, hit that pause recording button and you can see now that little message is on the screen. It's no longer recording your voice, it's stopped, so you can clear your throat, go to the toilet, make a cup of tea, answer the phone, whatever it might be. As soon as you're ready to carry on, you can click this resume recording button, and because I've been speaking continuously through that, there'll be a little bit of a break if we play this back. But basically, um, we can see we've got about 30 seconds or so now on this slide, so I'm gonna move on to the next slide. Again, we've got an overall timer on the right of how long the whole presentation's taken, and this timing here is for how long I've been on this particular slide, or this particular bit of narration. I'm going to click, and there's my first bullet point on this page. Again, I can talk for as long as I want on this one, and when I'm ready for it, then there's my second bullet point. And as the person watches your presentation afterwards, that's what they will see. They will see the bullet point appear and you talk about that bullet point appearing. Um, so we can go all the way through this and then on to the next slide. And what I'll show you now is also the um, pen and ink recording because we've got down here the um, pen, either laser pointer or pen, if I choose the pen for example, um, I can actually draw on a slide and I can circle particular words, I can draw arrows uh, really badly uh, apparently, um, and those will be recorded as part of this presentation as well. So when you're happy with that, when you want to move on to the end of the presentation, or you can simply hit escape if you've got nothing more that you want to say about it, and the remaining slides can just simply be looked at in the person's uh, own time, uh, then I'm going to click escape. And that's it. We've now recorded um, the voice and the timings and also the pen. We can see on each slide there's now this little um, loudspeaker icon and if I click the play button here so now we're playing the presentation and there you are you can hear me um, speaking earlier on and then again on slide two we've got the sound there and we'll also have the timing um, and then on this slide here you can see the ink is capped and if I was to play this particular slide the next slide and what I'll show you now is also the um, pen and ink recording, because we've got down here the um, pen, either laser pointer or pen. If I choose the pen, for example, um, I can actually draw on a... There you go. Um, so I won't uh, force you to listen to me twice in one video. But you can see there that you've got all of that included, the timings, the voice, the pen and ink, it's all there. Um, you can now package this show up, uh, well, save it, and then um, either zip it up or put it in cloud storage, send it off to someone, make it available. Uh, if you're a teacher, as I am, and you're making your PowerPoint presentations available for your students, for them to look at afterwards, this is a fantastic way of just adding to a presentation so they can look at it, they can understand it better, you can explain it to them carefully. Um, it's it's a, good, uh, a good way of adding to a PowerPoint presentation. Now there's one final thing I just want to show you. If we go up to set up slideshow, we're still in the slideshow tab, we're going to go to set up slideshow, you can see that the advanced slides option has switched from the default, which is manually, to the use timings if present. 
Now, obviously what will happen if you keep that option selected is that as the person plays your presentation, they will be automatically moved from one slide to the next, just as though you were there right next to them clicking on each bullet point or clicking on each slide. Um, however, if you don't want that, if you want instead for them to be able to choose when to go on to the next slide, then you can switch that to manually. Your narration will still be there, your pen and laser pointer will still be there, the bullet points as they appear on the slide, they will be there still, but the slide won't automatically move on to the next one. Uh, so it'll give them a breather, give them a pause. OK, they've watched that slide. Now they're ready to move on to the next one. So it's up to you which of those options you choose. Loop timings, if present, will basically turn your PowerPoint presentation into a video. That's almost what it'll be. Um, it'll be a video that explains to them everything, both visually and verbally. So I hope that this uh, was useful to you. I hope I haven't gone on too much about this, but um, if you have any questions um, about narrations or recording a slideshow, please do leave a comment below. I do read comments, I do reply to comments, and if necessary, I do respond by producing um, other videos. So any questions at all, please do get in touch. If you like this video, found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. It does make a difference. And what also makes a massive difference is if you haven't already subscribed, please just knock that little red subscribe button. That would be fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. I hope to see you in another one.